Thank you for joining me for another Quick Hits Conversation. I'm Dr. Robin. With me today, I have Chris Jurgen. He is a commercial real estate for 30 years, focusing on creating space for small businesses. I have Royce King. She's the owner of Your Startup Coach, where she helps with marketing and social media for small businesses. And I have Tony Sampagno, and he is a management consultant in sustainable development in the energy space. The question I have for you today, what does it mean to have a good relationship with a client and how do you create it? Royce, can you kick us off? Absolutely, Robin. Well, I've been uh, running your startup coach since 2014 and I have learned some lessons along the way. The first thing that I think it takes to have a good relationship with a client is to manage expectations, to have that discovery call, make sure you're a good fit, I never try to sell during my discovery mm -hmm. call. And I know that a lot of people will recommend that you do try to close the sale, mm -hmm. but I really am just checking out, are we a good fit? Do we have the same work style? Are they going to be satisfied with the end result? And are we looking for the same thing? And so managing those expectations and determining fit is a start. The second thing that I would say is to look at each relationship as an ongoing relationship. Mm -hmm. I try to position myself as a strategic partner, as basically an outsourced CMO that is much more budget friendly than to have one on staff versus a transactional project-based business partnership. And when I position myself as a strategic partner, I find I can spend less on marketing, have happier customers, and really increase that customer lifetime value by mm. showing the full value that I bring to the table to serve them. Okay. So value creates a good relationship. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was actually a very good response. Um, and I, I, I always look at it that um, most people, when they come to me, they already kind of know what they want. Um, so managing expectations is another way of looking at it. The way I, I would describe it is establishing trust um, because, you know, when you're selling something, people have to trust you. Uh, and if they don't trust you, it's not going to be a great relationship. I mean, you can build the trust. Um, but I, I always find um, when Roy said managing expectations, uh, that kind of is the integral part of what I do mm. is, you know, this is what I offer. And if someone asks questions because they're drilling down, kind of be honest about the responses, because oh, yeah. if you say something that you're not going to be able to deliver, that's going to destroy the relationship. So, you know, honesty is really the, the way to establish it. Mm. Um, that's been my experience um, mm -hmm. and I, I have relationships that become friendships and I have relationships that just remain business depending on what the client's looking for but if you feel that you have affinity with someone you can become friends and um, it makes it easier because they get more out of you <laughs> mm. um, so those are absolutely on point the both your answers I come from a business to business perspective on the relationship and uh, on that, I can further break into niche products and commodity products. And my experience in commodity products, it's transactional, it's handled by procurement, and your relationship is as good as how low can you go in terms mm. of price and delivery. When you go to the other aspect that you have the niche product, then all your answers kind of come into play as you start a relationship with your customer. So we have to be position, no surprises, you have to get trusted. And what I've noticed also recently is baby boomers and the ex generous are kind of that millennials that are now achieving positions of seniority on some corporations. They tend to be far more transactional on their mm. approach, even to bespoke uh, pro projects. Both parties have to involve and have to have a discovery call and have to probe and have to understand it. And it, it's interesting to see the small, this kind of shift that's beginning mm. to happen on corporate culture. So do you think then that those of us who are the boomers, the Gen Xers, uh, we're more likely to try and build that relationship and have a relationship where they're more likely, this is what I need and this is what I'm going to pay you? Is that what you're saying? 
Yeah, that's, that's the, the, the millennials are beginning to go into that direction, into a more transactional. They don't have time. Mm. They say, just send me an email with your specification and I will debate with my team and come back to you with a response. When you address special baby boomers, they want to sit with you, have a conversation and you have several meetings, you have discoveries and presentations and they explore the problem. Uh, and that gives space for corporate entertainment of sorts because it's very limited nowadays in Europe because of the laws against corruption. But there's still space for that and they welcome this. The millennials don't. Interesting. So go ahead. I was no. going to say, in the work that I do, obviously I have a very um, intense relationship with my clients, a very emotional relationship with my clients. And I find that millennials are missing that. Like they, they'll they say to me, I love that I can tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly, and I can trust you with it. And I wonder if to your point, Tony, they aren't seeing it in their business because they're creating transactions. And so then they're mm -hmm. looking for someone like me where they can have that kind of relationship that has, to your point, Chris, the, the trust and, and to your point, Royce, having those foundations of here is what the expectations are. That's yeah, I think you could certainly balance that and ask the client what they're looking for. Some do feel relieved that you give them the space to share the good, the bad, and the ugly and to, to be different than what they're used to. And I'm mm. sure others want a more transactional approach. And I serve them. I have clients that say, you know, I just need three web pages written or something like that. And I may never hear from them again, right? Mm. But um, they were happy with the project-based approach and they move on and do their thing. Mm. Yeah, the millennial part was very interesting because my experience with them has been, it is very transactional and they, they don't understand the product because... Mm they're not experienced enough. Mm -hmm. Like the baby boomers have been through deals. They know what to expect and what not to expect. A lot of the millennials that come to me are just like opening their new business or, you know, and they're kind of, um, it's really high expectations. And they think they're buying sort of like a product, a consumer product where they're sort of, you know, I can return it for a full refund mm -hmm. sort of expectation. And that's not how you sign the contract. <laughs> um, so, you know, but having said that, they learn very quickly. They're usually pretty smart. They learn very quickly. And, you know, you can build the relationship. It takes a lot longer, but you can build it. The one thing that always surprises me is how they sign contracts as if it's an app without questioning anything. Oh. Whilst your traditional baby boomers and X, uh, Gen Xs will sort of question the lease document and you know want to change make a few changes these are just signed they didn't, i didn't know if they read it because <laughs> oh, they're so used to the yeah i think they're so used to, on apps. yeah interesting yeah so i'm wondering if we're saying to create a good relationship with a client you kind of have to meet them where they are whether they're transactional or they're looking for that more relationship and kind of build it from there and, and what that looks like may be different from person to person yeah i mean from, from again my perspective which slightly different than you, Royce, and you, Christopher. It starts with the press sales, which is the discovery phase, and you start kind of courting and talking, and then you go into the sales process, which is sometimes very fractured because of the nature of the project that you're trying to sell or the service you're trying to sell or the combination and the many parties involved. And then the after sales, which is also fundamentally important. Mm. It's because then you receive calls from your client, but sorry, it's not working properly. So the whole customer journey from beginning to hopefully no end, because he will come back to you if you do the thing, right? You have to be managed and you have to create that. And, and, and on the, the business to business, non-commodity space, establishing relationships, especially if you're dealing outside of the perceived Western culture. Mm -hmm. So if you go to Africa, Middle East, Southeast Asia, India, personal uh, relationships like I like you mm. and we go together and I know your family and we go out drinking and we get drunk together mm. that is paramount oh. it's it, it, without that there is no business no matter how good you are interesting yeah so globally it makes a difference too that's a really good point I think for me what makes a relationship good whether it's with a, a customer with a client with a friend 
is that mutual respect. You are not out to get me and I am not out to get you. And I think if I trust that, that's what makes a relationship good. And building that I think is key. So I want to thank you for having this conversation with me. That is our 10 minutes. And I look forward to speaking to each of you again really soon.